Hello guys, in the last video we have implemented one class which was account holder class. For that account holder class there were data members like account number was there, then account holder name was there and account balance was there. So if I talk about size of the account holder class then it will be 4 bytes for account number, 20 bytes for name since it is an array of 20 characters and 4 bytes for balance. So 4 plus 20 plus 4 it is 28 bytes. Now there is a main function and inside main function I have created one object of account holder class which is a1. Now when this a1 is declared compiler will allocate memory which is 28 bytes and to this block there are three things there is account number accno acc holder name account holder name and acc balance which is account balance so this memory is allocated by compiler and it is initialized to garbage values but suppose if i want to put some meaningful values immediately after the object is declared that is i want to initialize the a1 object this is a1 object then how to initialize that can I use initialization syntax of structure because classes in C++ are analogous to structures in C. That means can I write something like this if I want to initialize equals to in the curly bracket I will write account number then some name and then I will give some balance. Will this code get compiled? If I try to compile this code, it will throw an error if I initialize the object in this way because this syntax do not work with classes because these data members are private. If you declare them public, then it will work because then it will become as good as structure. But since these data members, account number, account holder name and account balance, they are declared under private access specifier, specifier I cannot access I cannot assign value to them from main function since it is a non-member function. So I cannot initialize this a1 object using structure syntax. Then how to do that? So for that the solution is constructor. Now what is constructor in C++? Constructor is also a member function like other member functions we write accept display. Constructor is also one member function, but there are few special things about constructor or you can say there are some characteristics of constructor. So which are the characteristics of constructor? First thing is constructor has same name as that of class name. That means if my name of, if my class is account holder class, then name of the constructor will be account holder. If my class is complex class, then name of the constructor will be complex. Then second thing about constructor is Constructor do not have any return type, not even void. So when we declare or define constructor, we do not write return type before that. And third thing is, constructors are implicitly called. Implicitly called means they are automatically called. So we need not to call them explicitly like other member functions. So we will implement all these things and we will understand them better. This is the account holder class that we have implemented and in the main function I am creating two objects a1, a2. For those objects I am calling accept and display functions. But now suppose I don't want to call the accept function. Now if I compile and run without calling accept then what will happen? It is giving me some garbage into the output because uh, the compiler will initialize the data members to garbage. Now, I told you that using constructor I can initialize the objects with some specific values. Let me write it on two separate lines, say A1 and A2 are there. Now first thing is we will try the initialization syntax of structure. So here if I initialize A1 using curly bracket and comma separated values in the same sequence as they are declared inside a class then this syntax will not work here 
now this is possible only if the data members are public so if i write it if i declare them under public access specifier it will get compiled but if you declare them private then structure syntax of initialization do not work now the solution is not to make them public because if i declare the data members as public then i am losing the encapsulation and you know that we have to follow the major pillars of object oriented programming when we write any program so now what i will do instead of this thing let me write one function which is constructor function i told you that constructor has same name as that of class name so i write one function here which is having same name as that of class name it do not have any return type so i did not write return type here so so the function will be account holder parenthesis and semicolon now let me write the definition also no return type after that i will write class name which is account holder scope resolution account holder name of the function and then i will open and close the block so this is class name and this is name of the function both are same here i am printing some message initially say i am printing constructor just one message i am not doing anything inside that so i have written this function which is constructor function and inside that i have printed some message but i did not call it so now if i compile the code and run it then what is happening so into the output let me comment out display functions into the output it is showing constructor twice that means this function is getting called though i did not call it explicitly so who is calling that function compiler will call this constructor function automatically and when the compiler will call it when you create the object after you after you declare the object compiler will automatically call the constructor function immediately so even you can see that in debugging if i debug this code how to debug the code there is a separate video on how to debug a code under c programming so you can watch that video otherwise you can understand it here also first you need to compile the code with hyphen g option so i will say g++ hyphen g name of the file hyphen o name of the executable that i need and after that i will run gdb and to gdb i will give executable so first i will create breakpoint b space main so it will put breakpoint at main function then r for run so you can see that now it is executing first line of the main function which is account holder a1 so here i have created the object now if i press s s for step into then where it is going it is going inside the constructor function and it is displaying that constructor message then if i press n for next it is coming back to the main function now second object is declared again it is going inside the construction for constructor for a2 object it is printing the message and it is coming back so for each object it is going inside the constructor function automatically immediately after that object is declared so we can use this function to initialize the data members of the class that means instead of printing this message over here if i assign the values to account number some default values say default value for account number is 100 then default value for account holder name is say crazy clicks some value and default value for balance each say 1 lakh and now if i display a1 and a2 objects you can see that sorry not gdb so now you can see that both the objects are initialized with the values that i have provided inside the constructor 
so this is how constructors are used to initialize the data members of a class for a particular object now this constructor that i have written is specifically specifically called as default constructor or no argument constructor because i am not passing any arguments to that so it is called as no argument constructor or default constructor now if you know the function overloading feature of c++ then according to the function overloading i can write multiple functions with same name provided that signatures are different so here i can write one more function with account holder name with different signature that means if i insert one more constructor account holder and this constructor is taking some parameters int char star and say double then signature of this one and this one is different so in that case the second constructor is called as parameterized constructor so this previous one is default constructor and second one is parameterized constructor so when the parameterized constructor will come into the picture now we know default constructor if i declare the object a1 like this it will call the default constructor now parameterized constructor will get call if i pass the values from this parenthesis after i declare the object immediately after i declare the object suppose i am passing few values say account number is 2 then account holder name it's say jack and some balance say 50000 then now for second account holder let me complete the definition for parameterized constructor no return type after that class name is account holders the name of the function is also account holder and it is taking three parameters integers account id then name character pointer and double balance so in the constructor definition i will assign these values to respective data member that means these values will come from main function if you see the main function these three values are passed and they are received in these formal arguments number name and balance bal so i will assign them to account number then account holder name and acc balance respectively So now let me compile, run it. So second object is initialized with the values that I am passing from the main function. So this is the use of parameterized constructor. So this will call parameterized constructor. A2 object will call parameterized constructor and A1 object will call default constructor. One more constructor is remaining which is copy constructor that I told you. But that constructor I will I will explain sometime later because before that we should know what is destructor. So as of now default constructor and parameterized constructor are sufficient. So please subscribe to my channel. I will meet you again in the next video.